All right, you guys, we're gonna give you a tour of our, I don't know, what do you wanna call it? Overlanding adventure truck camper? Slash land yacht slash tiny home on wheels. It's not 100% done yet, but it's about 90, 95% done, and we'll just give you the tour from here. So if you guys wanna see anything specific on like the process of how we did it or anything like that, just check out some of our older videos. You'll see um, just how we, kind of the process of putting this thing together. So first off, we have our base platform. This is my truck that I've had for like 10 years. It's a 1999 Dodge Ram 2500, 5.9 liter, 24 valve, uh, turbo diesel pickup truck. We did a bunch of things to the truck. We did the whole suspension system. We put some a little bit bigger tires on, still have stock wheels. Um, we're getting a buck stop bumper because this thing is about to fall apart. We did a few things under the hood like a cold air intake and a whole intake manifold system thanks to pusher intakes. Um, it's looking nice under the hood. It's running really well. We replaced the whole pickup bed with an aluminum flatbed that I found used on Craigslist. And then we just put the truck camper on it and then we kind of built this whole storage system underneath it so again it's not quite done i still gotta like rivet some panels on and fix some stuff um put a seal in here this is what it looks like all closed up i think it integrates really well we sprayed the whole camper and everything with raptor truck bed liner so we have one compartment here it's held up by a line and it's all aluminum we're just experimenting with the weather stripping slash seals around the top edge. I don't expect it to be 100% waterproof, but like 90%. So this is just some extra uh, weather stripping that we had. I think it's a little bit too big, too thick. So we'll replace that and finish it off with some thinner stuff. But basically we have storage all underneath here. Um, this is like more the tool side. We have all our toolboxes and spare parts and parts that we've been meaning to replace that we haven't gotten to yet. Where's my water? <laughs> we did our tie downs instead of going the conventional route with like the things that like bolt onto the frame and stick way out. We want it to be as sleek as possible. Rear tie down is just bolted straight to the bed, the aluminum bed, and there's a nice thick backing all in this whole area. So that's the rear tie down. And then the front tie down. I don't know if you can see it, but when we bought this used camper, we, there were multiple points. There's a one point here and one point here on the camper side. And then I just did the tie down straight. It's just a, a hole through the bed, um, but the tie down is actually onto this support system that's tied into the bed frame in two different spots. So this holds the flat bed to the frame and then the tie down is right here. Yep, that's basically it there on that side. We have some aluminum roof rack that we made. And then we come around to the back. Again, I think the Raptor liner, bed liner came out super good. We have our accordion aluminum steps we can put in and out. We added a little ladder so we could get up to the roof. Nice aluminum ladder. Here's the other side with our storage system that opens up. We were just charging our electric skateboards here. Um, this is more like the fun side, but also we have some utility stuff going on here. This is where we can get the city water directly in. We got one of those hoses that like, it's like, I don't know what you call them, but they squish into nothing. So the whole hose fits into here. So it doesn't take up a ton of room. It's also a little bit lighter. And we have our 30 amp power. This is where our propane is. That's our hood, our oven hood vent stove hood vent our furnace propane furnace refrigerator is back behind there this is our water fill so when we just want to fill our water tank which is something around 30 gallons we just fill it right here and again same tie down systems on this side and a ton of storage we just left so we have a lot of stuff a lot of stuff we probably don't need and we're going to try to try to empty out because we're pretty heavy right now but for the most part it's working really well under here we just added a trailer a new trailer hitch we did new leaf springs a new hellwig sway bar to help with all that weight up high um we did new lights in the flatbed but obviously the the camper lights are the important ones well, i'll show you guys the inside of the truck it's a little bit of a mess it's kind of packed but um i don't know we have some supplies obviously our on the go tula cutlery you guys could get in the tula shop if you want 
Ooh, fancy. It's perfect for on the road because like sometimes we get stuck going to fast food restaurants or just eating out in general. So we don't have to use any plastic. Have our own bamboo cutlery set. Um, and then in the truck, we just got a bunch of storage in the back seat. It's all it's our Zamp solar panels and our Rough Country lights that we haven't had a chance to install yet and then just some clothes and stuff and bins so hopefully we'll be clearing this stuff out and it'll be mounted around the truck and and camper and uh yeah so tell me a little bit about your truck i've had this truck for 10 years it's been through a lot of adventures a lot of beach driving across to california once so down to florida a bunch of times yeah she's been a good truck she's getting old but she's uh she's handling this nicely so far i used to have it running on waste cooking oil um but when i moved down to florida i didn't have the filtration set up there and all the resources that i needed so kind of took that system out and now she's just running back on straight diesel the air conditioner hasn't worked in nine years the radio doesn't work <laughs> so we have lots of great conversations on the road just kidding, it's so loud. We can't even really talk to each other when the windows are down. But that'll all change when we get to colder climates. We just roll with the windows down. AC's been on the list and I have some parts for it, but we just didn't get to it. We just ran out of time. She's got around 200,000 miles on her, which is pretty young for Cummins diesel engine. Just hopefully all the other components are hold up nicely. Yeah, we just did a brakes right before we left, the whole suspension system in the whole truck, and then a bunch of those extras that I was telling you guys about before. One big thing about these trucks is because it's got an electronic injection pump, you have to keep that electronic injection pump cool. So we got an air dog filtration and pump, and that is a super reliable lift pump that'll feed the injection pump with a ton of cool diesel fuel and just keep that injection pump cool and it's got filters mounted on it that's under there that's one of the big most important upgrades and then we have a fuel pressure gauge just so we can monitor the fuel pressure um and it's electronic so as soon as i start the truck it becomes accurate just so we can monitor that fuel pressure if we lose that fuel pressure then we have to stop because we'll fry that injection pump really quickly as long as you have a good lift pump like our air dog lift pump and you monitor the fuel pressure, you'll be fine, you know? Shall we show you the inside? So this was a really fun project because this camper was 2006 and it was super old school. It was all dark wood and red cushions and it just wasn't pretty. So we got the opportunity to take something really old and make it really new. So first things first, what should I show you? Come on in, come on in. We painted all the walls and all the cabinets and a lot of this was like veneers so we used special cabinet paint and I think it turned out really nice. Um, for the countertops it was all contact, like a sticker, contact paper and obviously it's not perfect, you can tell it's not real marble but it gave it a really nice look. We used sticker tile to give us a little backsplash and Billy did an amazing job on our vinyl flooring. And one new skill besides learning how to paint very different surfaces, I learned to sew box cushions. So I did the entire cushions. For our table, we got this like lagoon moving table mount thing so we can have it pushed like all the way back so it's out of the way or you can have it in the middle like a normal table pushed all the way over here and it even goes down in the middle and you can put this on top and it makes a whole nother bed. So that's pretty cool. Up here is actually considered like a kid's bunk. Obviously we use it for storage, but let me show you how it works and it goes like this and there is all of our camera storage food food storage containers and all of that stuff so it's nice that we have all this extra storage this is our oven i don't think it's ever actually been used yet it's propane and then we have this weird like very old rusty like stove cover so we got this stove cover cutting board it's got like a grippy sticker so you don't have to worry about it sliding all over the place we have really old school radio for storage up here where we keep our plates and all of our pots and pans 
one thing we are limited in is storage obviously we're in a truck camper so we don't have much room to like put our clothes and stuff but here's our bed and i got like baskets and so we each have a basket and then we have a shared basket where all of our clothes are and this is our comfy bed i bought it on amazon it came in a box this is our refrigerator. It runs off propane or electric. We haven't completely figured out how to get it to work 100% yet. It's not it, working correctly. Yeah, it gets cool, but definitely not cold enough to keep food in. So we are working on that, trying to YouTube any possible fixes. If you have any ideas, let us know. It turns on. We can get the flame on propane. We can get it on electric, but it just doesn't get cold. The freezer, like gets cold to the touch but not really one of our favorite additions to this camper is our barn door the door that was on the bathroom was just a normal door on hinges and it opened up but it took up half the hallway I mean, it took up the entire hallway so we added our very own homemade barn door so it slides back and forth doesn't take up any space so it doesn't bang all around while we are driving. We added this simple little latch. And then in our bathroom, it is a wet bath, kind of similar to what we have on the boat. And our light isn't working in here right now, <laughs> but we added our very own shell mirror. That is a collection of all of our shells on our travels. And we have our little towel holder, some more storage down here for any bathroom and first aid supplies, and our little toilet that goes right into the holding tank. And this is our shower. Um, and yeah, so let me show you some more storage we have over here. So in here we have some food and we also have a lot of our clothes that had to be hung. Again, I told you we don't have tons of room to keep our clothes, so that's the best we can do right now. And here we have all of our utensils and knives and all of that sorts. Same thing under here, lighters, knives, that stuff. Under here is our cleaning supplies, our trash can, and our foldable dish rack that came in super handy. And then these are just super, super tiny storages. Again, it looks like you have a lot of room, but the space in there is only like this big. And as you guys all know, we have Jetty as our crew member. So we have her food right down here. It's on like a little ledge that hides the water lines. So it's up there and kind of out of the way. And then we keep her food right under here in a nice little uh, tin jar. So it's protected and won't go bad. So this is where our lithium batteries and our water tank are stored and all the components for them. So we have Dakota lithium, lithium batteries, 100 amp hours each wired in parallel for 200 amp hours at 12 volts, um, which is plenty of power and super lightweight batteries, which is what we really need for a truck camper where we want them to have as much power as possible, taking up as little weight and uh, space as possible. Um, we have some controllers mounted on this wall, just the two solar controllers that once we mount our ZAMP solar panels, those will control them. And then this is a DC to DC charger so we can charge the batteries when the truck is running, when it's just plugged in. Um, we have an inverter right here. And then, yeah, we have a lithium charger. So when we're plugged into shore power, our lithium charger that came with our Dakota lithium batteries is right there. And that's all wired in. And then we have a shunt and a Victron uh, battery monitor system right here. So we could just monitor the state of our battery. We're at full charge right now. This also turns on and off the inverter right here remotely. And um, this is our AC panel. This is just kind of how our, the previous owner wired it. and. I'm not super familiar with AC wiring or electronics. I just have a basic idea of how it works and it seems like he did a good job with that. Um, I kind of rewired the DC side of the system um, in a way that I'm familiar with and in a way where we're going to be using the DC side of the system way more than being plugged into shore power um, just so that when we get off grid and we're set up with solar and everything like that, we can just be off grid much more and use the DC system and then the inverter when we need it. 
and the water tank was in that compartment as well. That's pretty much it for our home on wheels here. I hope you enjoyed this tour. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so so you can see all of our adventures, future and past. We're gonna be doing some cool trips with this rig and like I said, stay tuned if you wanna see what it looks like after we get it 100% complete with our solar panels and lights and all stuff like that. So we're gonna have some fun with that and uh, yeah.